Hey guys, behold the future. Or is it the future? We don't know. It's the new Toyota Mirai 2021. Uh, we uh, borrowed it from Laman Amsterdam. Thank you, Laman. Um, I don't know what to make of it. It's a really, really interesting thing. First of all, you can see it's a bit of a Lexus, right? A Lexus LS. Pretty aggressive here. Very sporty looking. Humongous wheels, 20 inch. And it's enormous. It's enormous. It's long. It's a bit of a Lexus LS. But what's most important? It's a, it's a hydrogen car. Inside, there's a lots and lots of trickery. We have here the fuel cell um, that makes the electricity from the hydrogen. There are three tanks uh, that are holding only 5.6 kilos of hydrogen, liquid hydrogen, under enormous pressure. The tanks are alongside here one here and one here i think it's just better if we look at it like that so those are three tanks the fuel cell the battery and the motor and there's also a power control unit and it's all hiding there so and that's the hydrogen mixing with the oxygen that is brought from the air mixing and turning into electricity water and a little bit of the heat and that's how it goes. I mean, actually I have to say Toyota are very brave to commercialize this. So kudos to them. And we have water as an exhaust. Whoa, <laughs> that is the fuel cell. So what it does is that it actually um, takes the liquid hydrogen and uh, turns it into um, electricity, uh, a little bit of heat and water at the end of the day. So. This car actually has an exhaust pipe with the water dripping out of that. It's not the engine, it's only the fuel cell. So it takes the hydrogen that it stores in the tanks, sends it into the battery in the back, and the engine is uh, in the rear, and it is only 155 uh, horsepower, I think. So it is actually a pretty slow car, so you would not expect it uh, to be so slow because it's electric, but no, it's very slow um, compared to uh, something like Tesla 3, of course. Compared to a normal Toyota or Lexus, it's quite okay. Nine seconds, uh, zero to 100, so okay-ish. You can actually see that the tunnel here is very, very thick. And the reason it's thick, it's because it's holding one of the tanks, actually. And despite the enormous size of the car, I'm not um, having a comfortable position here behind myself, actually there's not too much space in the back it's it's less than uh, less than almost anything it's pretty close to mini or fiat I would say um, yeah why fueling uh, takes about three to five minutes unlike the battery uh, electric vehicles um, but here lies the problem there are not so many uh, fuel stations actually in the Netherlands we have only five or six or seven something like that the biggest country in the world with many many fuel stations is actually germany um, so if you're not planning to uh, drive around further than uh, south of germany um, you're okay uh, france is also okayish but if you're going to venture into spain tough luck you cannot uh, there are no fuel stations there maybe that's why it explains that um, only 15 to i don't know uh, 20 000, uh cars of mirais sold all over the world at the moment um, so what do we have in the boot? It's pretty small and the reason it's small is because right here there's a battery uh, which you need uh, to have some uh, intermediate capacity so that uh, the fuel cell does not deliver electricity straight to the to the engine and what do we have here? A little bit of the accessories and yeah so I guess you can lift it as well I'm not going to try. Oh, you need to unhook it. And for such a luxurious car, it doesn't close uh, automatically. And this thing costs 76,000 euros. So what do you need uh, to um, want a car like that? I guess you want to be really uh, adventurous. You need to love experiments and you need to have pretty good tax incentive which we in the Netherlands uh, do have. So the cockpit, well, 
it seems to be modern and striking and everything, but it actually is uh, not very good, I have to say. So, okay, well, the normal display is quite okay. You get all the info, the speed, the consumption and everything. Um, but this one is very big. But what do you get? Some poor graphics uh, sat-nav. Um, climate control is taking all the space. Um, I'd rather actually try to hide it like that, but no. It actually goes uh, into the other way and stays like that. Um, lots of buttons that are um, basically duplicating the functions of, of the things up here. I guess I can call it useful. Um, a telephone, uh, wireless charging. Uh, you also have the um, um, auto assist parking, which uh, for Toyota, I have to say, works pretty good. And some storage space over here. Pretty nice quality leather, uh, if it's leather. It could be artificial. I, I cannot actually tell these days. It is, yeah, it is artificial. You can see that. Some little space here, very little, I have to say. I don't think anything fits here in the glove box. And behold, augmented reality head-up display. Very big, uh, quite as big as the uh, Volkswagens and, and BMW. Well, guys, this is it. We're driving the uh, hydrogen car. And the first feelings are, well, this is very familiar. For years and years, um, we had the Prius Plus, which was um, a bit more nimble and compact uh, than this one, but ergonomic wise and uh, ergonomic wise and functionality, this is all very familiar. It's the same uh, switch of the gearbox, same buttons, uh, same controls, a little bit of the same um, design uh, and the layout of the climate control and everything else. So from that sense, nothing special. But what a big car! much bigger than uh, the Prius and for sure uh, has a bit of a feeling of some actual luxurious sedan, you know, saloon. And I'm um, not sure if you can hear that and I'm not measuring it per se, but it is pretty quiet. Still, I can hear some air. I was expecting it to be airly quiet, but um, yeah some wind is still blowing and you, uh, you can still hear it and then yeah safety safety let's talk about safety because uh, that's the first word that you think about when you hear that there are three tanks at 700 bar what happens during the crash uh, apparently shouldn't be a big deal I don't know how uh, but they crashed test at Mirai and it survived without the explosions that's obviously the first thing you think about will it explode they say not we'll see but it is very interesting, huh? Which technology will win? It's so unpredictable. But I have a feeling that once the battery technology is beyond 1,000 kilometers, uh, that's it. I'm personally not capable of driving more than 1,000 kilometers per day. Um, I am, but it's difficult. So, would I buy this car? Um, I don't think so. Uh, but who knows what's going to happen in the near future? I mean think about it maybe uh, the battery uh, technology won't uh, get us too far and there will never be a, a battery operated car that will go beyond the holy grail of 1000 kilometers uh, and instead this thing will continue to develop really fast and then at the end of the day you're gonna have some some fuel cells that will be super efficient super small uh, and there you have it then then it's pretty easy uh, you fuel it just like your normal um, uh, petrol car and and, and go uh, in three to five minutes and this thing by the way has a pretty good range so 5.6 um, kilograms of uh, liquid hydrogens uh, are the um, it's actually not a lot if you think about it but but the consumption is only 
0.8. So in theory you can get 700, but they're actually saying it's uh, uh, 600 uh, kilometers of, of the range, which is, um, which is quite a good range actually, um, for the electric vehicle anyway. But still, um, to my liking, a bit too heavy, uh, lacking space in the back, um, and a bit too slow. So maybe in a, a couple of generations uh, it will be something interesting, but for now uh, I don't think I'm uh, going to experiment with this one.